Hey, I'm John Greaves III, and I'm the founder of Garage in Life, and I did a mock meet. And in just one second, I'll tell you why. While you wait, go ahead and grab one of these cool banners for your home gym by clicking right there. See you in a second. Okay, like I said, I did a mock meet. And in case you don't know what a mock meet is, a mock meet is when you basically pretend you're at a powerlifting meet and you do your squat, your bench, and your deadlift just to try to get a total. Let's say you are about to start working with a coach and he wants to know what your current numbers are. So you can say, well, I know that at my last meet, I did this. Maybe it's been a while since your last meet and you don't wanna go off of your previous meet numbers. Or let's say you've never done a meet before. So I would just do a mock meet. The thing is that when most people do a mock meet, they basically take their normal workout time and instead of doing whatever the normal workout would be, they do a max squat, max bench, and max deadlift. The problem with that is that doesn't really give you true meat conditions and really nothing can except for going to an actual meat. But I want to, you want to get as close as possible, right? At a normal meet, let's say the meet starts at 9. Essentially, you're going to be squatting if you're in flight A around 9 o'clock and you basically get if there are 10 lifters in the flight, you're going to get about 10 minutes between each of your attempts. Okay, so everybody does their first attempt and then it comes back around to the top. Everybody does their second attempt, goes back around to the top. Everybody does their third attempt. Built into that is time for the spotter loaders to change the weight if necessary and for the fact that you typically get about one minute once they say platform uh, ready or bars loaded or whatever they say, you typically get about one minute to come out and begin your attempt, okay? And if there are fewer than 10 lifters in a flight, what they'll do is give you one additional minute for every lifter that you're lacking from 10. So if there are only nine lifters in the flight, they'll give you an additional minute. If there are eight lifters in the flight, they'll give you an additional two minutes before they call platform ready, okay? So that means you're gonna be squatting about nine, and then if there are three flights, let's say you go all the way to flight C, you're gonna be bench pressing roughly around, oh, uh, eh, maybe about noon, between noon and one, because there's also a break typically between squat and bench because they have to change the configuration of the competition rack for bench pressing. And if you are competing in the Federation with a monolift, they gotta move the whole monolift out of the way and bring the bench press out, okay? So that takes time and you typically get about maybe a, anywhere from a 15 to a 10 minute break between squat and bench typically. All right, so if you're gonna take just one hour and set, do your max squat, your max bench, and your max deadlift, you already see that that's not enough time if you're gonna try to gauge how you would actually perform at a meet, which is huge. Again, if I say you're doing this because you're trying to figure out how you're going to perform at your first powerlifting meet. So. I went ahead and I did a mock meet and I just set aside the entire day to get my numbers. So I squatted at nine after warming up, then I cooled down, then at around 1 p.m. I came back out, I did some crawls, and then I warmed up and went ahead into my bench. Worked up to a max in the bench, and then I did the same thing. I went and recovered, and around about four o'clock, went out, warmed up again, then I came back and I did my foam rolling. And on the, in the case of the bench press, I didn't do foam rolling, instead I did some trigger point therapy to just loosen me up and then I also did some stretches. I squat and deadlift, I did foam rolling and some stretches. I went ahead and I deadlifted. As far as recovery goes, this is a strain on your body. In addition to the mobility work and soft tissue work that I did before training, I did some recovery stuff, so after squats, I did some hangs, and I grant you I wouldn't be able to do this out of meat, but I would do something to approximate the same effect. And then after bench press, I did some weighted stretching for my chest, and then after deadlifts, I just did some simple um, stretches to just re restore my length, I, so I hung from the bar again. I also tried to eat like I would at a meat, so if I were at a meat, I would eat between squat, between bench, between deadlifts, so I could keep my energy levels constant. 
and preferably it will be food from home that we are eating something that my body is used to. Meat day is not the day to experiment with that cool thing that you see that you know that the food truck has because you could have some sort of explosive results if you're not careful and think about the fact that you're going to single it. That's not the day you want to experiment with foods. You want to eat something that is as close to what your body is accustomed to eating, especially if you cut weight and then you're coming back and trying to rehydrate because if you've been cutting weight all week, your body's used to bland foods or whatever, and then you give it something that's like super greasy, you could have an undesirable uh, gastrointestinal result. Um, and do childish things in your clothes, possibly. So you don't want that to happen. So I, I had breakfast, I had lunch, but I ate foods that I'm accustomed to eating. And I also kept my supplementation roughly the same as what I would normally take. And the final thing is I stayed hydrated like I normally would at a meet. So I drank about a gallon of water. And other than that, I just chilled out. Um, I actually even took a nap for about 25 minutes because again, that was something that I would normally do at a meet. Some of the things I learned from this were my hand grip, my grip, my hand strength is not where it needs to be, but I kind of knew that because I've been training with straps. And so today was the first day that I seriously tried to use my hook grip in a long time. And so I was only able to get up to 500. I was really pleased with my bench. I got 340 pounds. The best I've ever done was in a unsanctioned push pull meet and I did 350. And then in squats, I, I, I had my doubts about it because I've been battling with a little bit of a knee issue and I still was able to get 415. However, I noticed, I did not realize this, but there's a little bit of helicopter when I squat down and I didn't realize it. And the way I know that is because the plates hit the safeties. That lets me know that I need to work on my core strength so that doesn't happen. And of course, that'll make me stronger anyway. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. The whole point of me telling you this was basically to let you know how to set up a mop meet it's something that would help you in terms of uh, just as a gauge to let you know where you are. And also it will give you some valuable feedback that you can use as you're putting together your next training cycle.